Hey there, Cannonites. Welcome back for a super heavy edition of Cannon Fodder. Interviews, book previews, fleet battles, and more await. So let's dive in. This week starts out with an interview with the one and only Duffy Beaudreau, the man who has been writing for Halo Escalation since issue 11. His first endeavor was a two-parter called Exposure, introducing Ayit Savi, a character many fans enjoyed then and now enjoy in the current story arc. While there have been ups and downs, I'd say Mr. Beaudreau has, overall, done a fairly good job. The interview gives us a great look at the process for writing these comics. Despite what I and others have said at any point during Mr. Beaudreau's run with Escalation, the guy has absolutely done his research and is dedicated to Halo's story. He rewatched and studied Spartan Ops in preparation for the Janus Key and Absolute Record story arcs and looked into the motivations and intentions of the librarian. As Mr. Beaudreau puts it, even though she's not physically present, she's the one who set everything into motion, so her intentions are definitely affecting the main conflict. The interview goes on to talk about the task of introducing Tanaka and how Ayit Savi developed. Both are interesting to read, but the stuff about Ayit was definitely the highlight. As the Sanghili learn to a certain express themselves as a society, Ayit does that on an individual level. What could be seen as a natural extension of the current trend in Sanghili society turns Ayit into an outcast, and Baudru says as much. I know I always say to read these interviews for yourself, but this one is an absolute must and I think may be one of my favorites to date. The next section brings to light the next novel in the Halo franchise, Halo Last Light. To quote myself, Last Light is a murder mystery set in the Halo universe that perfectly captures the turmoil following the Covenant War and does extremely well by beloved characters. That's actually in the article. I usually don't like to toot my own horn, stroke my own ego, what have you, but I do want to thank Grimm for giving me the opportunity to endorse this book. For the sake of full disclosure, I was given an advanced free copy of this book by 343. I honestly loved the book, but I want to let you know that I may have a bit of a bias towards it, given how I came to possess it. But again, the novel is excellent, and I cannot wait to share my thoughts with you. Grim actually pulled out another surprise, one that caught me off guard, actually mentioning my series of Blue Team videos that just went up earlier this week, and even linking directly to the video on Fred104, a prominent character in Halo Last Light. So again, thank you Grim. A last note on the book, a preview has been posted on the official Simon & Schuster website, Link in the description below, of course. Moving forward, we get into the real meat and probably the highlight this week, a look at fleet battles. The tabletop game has been off to a spectacular start and continues to grow and expand. This week, we get a look at some of the new ships that were shown at Gen Con last month and some teased in the original rulebook. We start with the CAS Assault Carrier, the same type used by the Prophet of Regret in Halo 2 and by Urtas Vadum in Halo 3. We also have a never-before-seen ship type, the Punic-class Supercarrier, the most famous ship in this class, and honestly the only one we know about, is the UNSC Trafalgar, once the pride of the UNSC and a ship fell during the Battle of Reach. This is one that many fans, myself included, have been waiting for a long time, and I can't wait to utilize this in fleet battles. We also have news of two other human ships, the Valiant-class Super Heavy Cruiser and the Halcyon-class Cruiser. The UNSC Everest is the most well-known of the Valiant-class cruisers, commanded by Admiral Preston Cole in the early years of the Covenant War. And of course, we all know the Halcyon class. Excitingly, there will actually be two sets of rules for the Halcyons, one for normal Halcyon class cruisers, and special rules for the Pillar of Autumn, the famous Halcyon that first appeared in Halo CE 14 years ago, and one that received heavy upgrades, hence the special rules. Next, we hear about support vessels. The UNSC is getting the iconic Halberd class destroyers, and the Covenant is getting ADP escorts and SDC support ships. ADPs are said to be more common in Core Covenant regions, hence why we never saw them in the games, and the DSC is the classification of a well-known ship among longtime lore fans, the Infinite Secure. Finally, we hear about Orbital Max, Magnetic Accelerator Cannons. We've seen these in many promotional images, and it's something I can't wait to use in battle. Many of these models will be available by the end of the year, and before moving on, I figure you guys would like to see some more images of the CSO Supercarrier Spartan games made just for Gen Con. And yes, that is to proper scale. No word on whether anything like this model will ever be available for the public, but damn is it cool to see. Moving forward, we're given small details about plans for fleet battle expansions. The first would include some post-war Covenant crafts seen in Halo 4 and 5, along with the UNSC Infinity and Striding class frigates. Expansions like these will be really interesting, seeing as the UNSC's post-war ships are far superior to anything fielded during the Covenant War, some on par or even superior to Covenant tech. Another tease, and this isn't something that will absolutely happen, is the inclusion of the Flood. Spartan Games is still working out the details and the rules, but the general idea would be for boarding actions by the Flood, allowing them to take ships over. 
Such an expansion would have unique overlays and mechanics to reflect the nature of the Flood, and may even include resin infestation kits showing the Flood growths on the ship. This would be so damn sick. Spartan Games have done a great job at reflecting the nature of the Halo universe thus far, so I have no doubt that they can do that with the Flood too. Our next section takes a look at some key features with the upcoming September expansions. Along with several new elements for both the UNSC and Covenant, the expansions will feature new commanders and heroes to augment your fleets. Starting with the UNSC, we have Cortana and Fleet Admiral Lord Terence Hood. Both familiar faces and both characters I can't wait to use. Cortana as a hero can only be applied to a single ship, but she can augment that ship's abilities and hinder enemy forces. The art for Cortana does a great job at taking her Halo 4 appearance and taking away some of the fatigue. Take a close look at Halo 4's Cortana model sometime. 343 did a great job in making Cortana look like she's been active for a little too long. This piece shows Cortana near the start of her life, before entering the systems of ancient Forerunner superweapons and time started taking their toll. Lord Hood's commander rules will be designed to reflect his position as an admiral and the weight his reputation carries. Hood's art does a great job at reflecting his years of experience and the fatigue he must feel, but also resonates a sense of security and stoicism. On the Covenant side, we have some real treats. I'll start off with the hero figure, the Minister of Etiology. Some fans may recognize him from the Halo graphic novel story, Voyage of the Infinite Secor. His description reads, Assigned to Thalvatomy's fleet of particular justice as a master of the support ship Infinite Secor, this ambitious legate would eventually meet his end fighting the very threat he had spent much of his life studying, the Flood. Like Cortana, the infamous legate can only be assigned to a single ship, but he has the ability to add to a commander's dice pool, pull rank to adjust results, and can even order a shipmaster to move into the path of attacks meant for him. Very true to the nature of San Shayum, as we've come to love to hate. The art does well at reflecting the newer look of the San Shayum and resonates with the self-importance that the minister is known for. Finally, we have a character fans have been waiting a long time to see, the legendary Zaitan Jar Watinri. Though he would meet an ultimate end during the Great Schism, Zaitan's genius for war and his surviving battle recordings continue to instruct new generations of Sanghili shipmasters, serving with both Jewel Umdama's Covenant and the Arbiter's Swords of Sanghelios. While Zaitan was not present at the Fall of Reach itself, his brilliance combined with the audacity of Supreme Commander Thalvatomy would have made for a devastating combination that battle. This guy is, as I said, a legendary figure, both in-universe and a longtime fans. His gameplay is said to allow players to seize control at key junctures and throw enemy plans into disarray, fitting giving his stature. The art, in my opinion, perfectly encapsulates the aura that would be given off by such a massive figure, massive both figuratively and literally. The armor design wonderfully takes established looks, notably the armor worn by counselors, and makes itself unique, fitting for an Imperial Admiral. Finally, we wrap up with a sneak peek at the planned Ground Battles tabletop game. Working at 1 100th scale versus the 1 25,000th scale of Fleet Battles, the Ground version will play similar to Fleet Battles, but also with additional rules and modifications, such as troop morale. While the game plays on a squad level, I would guess something similar to Halo Wars if it were tabletop, the game is working to incorporate iconic Halo moments, such as a Warthog Splatter. Dropships won't make the initial cut, but there will be models eventually. The game will launch with cutouts of dropships, one side showing a top view, the other with the vehicle destroyed. Drop pods will also be a key feature. And that wraps up the main article, and what an article it was. The new universe entries this week are the AI's Iona and Black Box. Neither contain much in the way of new information, I'm sad to say. Iona's entry sums up her origins, her service as depicted in Halo Bloodlines, and later in Saint's Testimony. BB's, meanwhile, sums up his service with Kilo 5 and his strange appearance. Sadly, no mention of how Black Team and Iona got offline in Installation 1-4. On the brighter side, though, we do actually have official art for BB, so that's pretty cool. And that does it for this week. It was a hell of an article with tons of teasers for Halo fans. Last Light is an amazing novel that I think fans will enjoy, and I can't wait for these fleet battle expansions. Now I just have to get through the initial scenarios. I'll be spending much of the weekend working on my review for Halo Last Light, so the next entries in the Halo 5 Primer series, which will cover Fireteam Osiris, will be postponed until then. For now, this has been Halo Cannon, and I'll see you all next time. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.